One day some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. So he's a brain transplant right now. Presentation. And the bid team rehearsed every day leading up to the final push. Some executives were meeting IOC members to promote Tokyo. I talked to several international press members after a Japanese presentation, and most of them highly evaluated Prime Minister Abe's speech, especially on the Fukushima issue. And the Japanese delegates all looked so happy to have Tokyo chosen as the host city because all their hard work has paid off. People here in Tokyo are obviously overjoyed at the news. NHK World's Hiro Morita is with the crowd who've gathered and are now celebrating at Komazawa Olympic Park. It's one of the main sites of the 1964 Tokyo Games. Hiro, what's going on there? The atmosphere is electric. The crowd erupted in cheers and celebration right after it was announced that Tokyo had been chosen to host the 2020 Summer Games. The park has been overflowing with energy and excitement since the Venice gates opened several hours ago. All over Olympic Park, you can see people hugging each other and giving high fives. NHK World's Miki Ebara joins us. She has been covering the IOC vote. Miki, the results, Tokyo 60 votes, mm -hmm. Istanbul 36. That's a big win, isn't it? It is a big win. In the first round, we learned just now that Tokyo received 42, whereas the other cities had 26 each, so it was a tie. The final round was, as you said, 60 to 36. Tokyo was supported by an over, overwhelming majority. Prime Minister Abe just gave a comment saying he was very pleased and wants to thank everybody in the world who supported Japan's effort. Was it a surprise, you think? I think it was a surprise to even uh, many supporters in Japan. We saw members of Tokyo Bid Committee um, just now, you know, in the video from, from Buenos Aires, they were crying. Um, Tokyo's bid was overshadowed by the crisis of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Prime Minister Abe had to assure that it has not and will never do any damage to Tokyo in the last presentation. First your ass is backed up, now the toilet's backed up, and if you're not going to have the right attitude about it, fuck it, I'll just shit on you. So yes, it was a surprise, but good surprise for those who supported. Thank you very much, everybody. So will it lift the spirits of many Japanese people? Perhaps not the whole population of Japan, but considerable amount of people because Japan's had series of bad news for a long time. Recovery of the economy has been very slow. We're losing young population. Basically, the Japan Japanese have lost confidence in themselves. Then the earthquake and tsunami happened, which devastated the vast area of Japan in 2011. So they hope that this winning the bed will lift up the spirit of many. It was a very tight race, wasn't it? So why did the IOC members choose Tokyo over the other cities? I think the other two contenders suffered from a lot of domestic problems. There were riots against the government across Turkey in May and June, just 
recently, and the ongoing civil war in neighboring Syria, which has killed so many people, and it has um, given Turkey a big burden of ref refugees coming into their own country. Spain also is facing major financial problems, and Japan's nuclear power plant crisis was the Japanese setback. So until the last moment, it was neck and neck race. It was very tight. Japan had organized three Olympics in the past, and its infrastructure has high standards. Um, Japanese officials pleaded that hosting the Games would give us back the confidence that we lost, and also beneficial to those affected areas that suffered so much damage. So that message will be well received. We have seven years ago before the Games, so what are the challenges that need to be tackled now? I think for Abe administration, the bat Tokyo's bid, even if they manage to play down the nuclear crisis, it still remains as one of the biggest challenges that Japan has. We know the whole world is watching how the Japanese government is going to, be, uh, is going to deal with it. Um, there are critics in Japan who say, why spend so much money on a sporting event rather than resolving the problems first? Um, the cost of hosting the games is estimated around $4 billion. Even Tokyo does not have as much financial problems as the other regions of Japan, but still they need to make sure the Olympics won't create any burden on the citizens. Um, and also, uh, they, there, you know, there are so many who are suffering from bad economy. So anyway, the win of the bid is official now. Now Japan's hosting the games, and so I hope it will have a positive psychological effect on people, especially those who were directly affected by the devastation two years ago. Thank you, Miki, for your insight. That was NHK World's Miki Ebara, and here is the world weather forecast. Next up, the Weather Channel cancels all upcoming weather-related programming out of respect for tornado victims. How would you like it if you went to pick your flowers and we're kneeling in radioactive waste. That's what's happening in Tokyo now. The people trying to bring the Olympics to Tokyo find themselves answering question after question about the leaks. On Saturday, the International Olympic Committee will choose the host city for the Games in 2020. We in Japan have witnessed the significant role athletes and sports can play in society. And now we are determined to share their inspiration and promote the Olympic values for young people around the world. Members of the Tokyo Big Committee held a news conference in Buenos Aires ahead of the IOC meeting. Reporters asked six questions. Four of them were about the safety of Tokyo. I'd like to assure you that there is no risk like the one you might imagine in Tokyo. Like it, I said radiation levels in Tokyo are the same as those in any other city in the world. And when I was in Tokyo, I took some samples. Now, I didn't look for the highest radiation spot. I just went around with five plastic bags. And when I found an area, I just scooped up some dirt and put it in the bag. One of those samples was from a crack in the sidewalk. Another one of those samples was from a children's playground that had been previously decontaminated. Another sample had come from some moss on the side of the road. Another sample came from a, um, um, the, the roof of an office building that I was at. And the last sample was right across the street from the main judicial center in downtown Tokyo. Well, I brought those samples back, declared them through customs, and sent them to the lab. And the lab determined that all of them would be qualified as radioactive waste here in the United States and would have to be shipped to Texas to be disposed of. For the Japanese government recently admitted that some 300 tons of radioactive water have leaked into the ocean. Misei Murata, a former Japanese ambassador to Switzerland, criticized the Japanese government and the operator of the crippled nuclear plant, Tokyo Electric Power Corporation, for its handling of the situation. TECO recently admitted to leaks of radioactive water. The amount is much more that the simulation had taken into account. 
The international community has also voiced concerns over the issue, but Tokyo, meanwhile, is busy drumming up support for its bid in hosting the 2020 Olympics. 2020 Tokyo, let's do well. Murata stressed the fact that Japan does not realize the gravity of the issue is more outrageous. If Japan can secure the safety of its own nation, it is being insincere in hosting an international event like the Olympics. It should step down. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad. I've got a headache this big, and it's got Excedrin written all over it. I've got a headache this big, and it's got Excedrin written all over it. Excedrin, the big headache medicine. More medicine than any regular strength pain reliever. The most medicine you can buy without a prescription. Nothing is stronger. I had a headache this big, but I took Excedrin, and it's gone. Excedrin, from Bristol Myers. Excedrin, the headache medicine. Topic in life? Yes. Interest rates, mortgages, my husband and I both working so hard and just keeping up the pressure can give me an awful headache. Life got tougher and we got stronger. Extra strength in Cedron. With the two most powerful pain relievers you can buy. Plus a third ingredient to give you unsurpassed headache relief. I'm glad there's Excedrin to get rid of my headache. Extra strength in Cedron. Capsules and tablets. Life got tougher and we got stronger. Blink of an eye In the blink of 